Alright, hello everybody, and welcome to my new Let's Play series, a special Halloween, fall, spooky season kind of Let's Play, because I tend to play Corpse Party games around this time of year, and granted, this one may not be as spooky as the other Corpse Party games. It's actually apparently a lot more lighthearted. Um, so for those of you who don't know, this is Corpse Party Sweet Sachiko's Hysterical Birthday Bash. Hopefully I've said the uh, title correctly. Um, so this is kind of like a alternate universe or kind of a spin-off apparently of Corpse Party where it is uh, Sachiko, the uh, main antagonist of the series. It is her birthday and I guess she is going to be bringing in the characters from Corpse Party to celebrate with her. To be honest, I don't know too much about the game, but I think that's the general consensus of it. Uh, so people have been requesting me to play this game because you guys like it when I play the Corpse Party series. So hopefully you will enjoy this Let's Play. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, let's start up this game. And um, I don't know what to expect from this. I imagine it's probably going to be a little bit more humorous, a little bit more lighthearted. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. This is Heavenly Host Elementary, a hell that exists beyond the concept of place where the dead roam free and eternally torment the living. And our story begins when the one who rules over this hell, Sachiko, the girl in the red dress, suddenly lost consciousness and fell to the floor. Oh, oh, it's good to be back. It's a weird kind of nostalgia about being back here again. The child, uh, the child spirits who were bound by the curse of this school all gathered around her quizzically. And the oldest among them, Yuki, reached out her hand to touch Ch uh, Sachiko's shoulder, almost as if in worry. Only for Sachiko to spring her own arm up and grab hold of Yuki's encroaching hand in a single motion, glaring at her prey with bloodshot eyes. <laughs> Perhaps glaring is too gentle a word. From betwixt her black strands of hair, eyes like daggers shot at Yuki, boring through her already hollowed cranium. However, Yuki-chan, ohayou! <laughs> and the next instant, the expression on uh, Sachiko's face changed to a smile, not unlike that of an ordinary child. It was an infectious smile, too. Yuki, Ryu, and Tokiko alike all lit up like candles from its glow. Hysteric birthday, alright. It's weird having such happy music in the actual Heavenly Host part of the game. Sachiko then turned for a moment to face the calendar on the wall, and as if on cue, the old date listed thereupon tore away and drifted to the floor. As it fluttered with a faint crinkling sound, the newly reborn calendar now proudly displayed its new moniker, July 19th. <laughs> I like the idea of she's like just a total little demon child the other days of the week, but on this one day, she can just be a kid again. <laughs> Oh, even her mother came. I've seen, like, you know, um, CGs of her. I don't think- I think this is the first time seeing a sprite of Yoshi. Oh, it is. It's just this is the one day where I'm we're gonna treat them nicely. 
今日はみんなに御社を出すよまだ死んでない人たち全員体育館に集めておいて OK、yep、so it seems like we are gathering like all of the all the people from the previous games, the students and I guess she's just gonna kind of force them into be like, you're gonna celebrate my birthday with me <laughs> But I have a feeling it still won't be without some deaths here or there because that would just be too weird for this game When I came to, I found myself in a very spacious but dimly lit building. The ceiling above me had to have been a good 30 feet or more off the ground, with rows of lights evenly spaced along its entire area. And the floor below me was clearly varnished, shining with a glossy finish. I lifted my head a bit and surveyed the area in front of me, and the first thing I saw was a stage flanked on both sides by drawn red curtains. And right in the middle of it was a podium like the kind you typically see principals standing behind as they introduce themselves to new classes. This gives me Donkin Ropa vibes. This is like the brightest I've ever seen one of the rooms in Heavenly Host. So I'm wondering like which, where does this take place in the timeline of Corpse Party? I'm assuming they've already, they got out of Corpse, or er, they got out of Heavenly Host. But now they've been dragged back in again? The rain was coming down in sheets outside, and the steady pitter-patter of it on the roof filled this entire massive space with a deceptive calmness. On either side of the room, a plastic basketball hoop stretched its way up towards the ceiling, eagerly reaching like its players might. The space served as a gymnasium and auditorium both, like so many others did in school buildings from throughout the mid-20th century. <laughs> I couldn't remember anything clearly, but I had the distinct sensation that this was not my first time experiencing the events of this particular day. Somehow, I could just feel it. And I knew that just a, a few short hours ago, in our plain old familiar class 2-9, my friends all performed the ritual that sealed us here in this horrible place. It was called Such a Go Ever After, and try as I might, I couldn't stop them. Hold on, just a sec. The music, at least on my end's a little loud. I'm just gonna turn it down. I think it's just because this is a very bombastic song. It almost feels like it doesn't quite fit. All right, there we go. Hopefully that'll be better. But something was different this time around. Right, exactly. For as much as we ran around Heavenly Host, this is the first this room has ever appeared. There were a lot of other people around as well. Students from a variety of different schools, most wearing uniforms I didn't recognize. For all the world, it looked and felt just like a Monday morning assembly. And I clearly wasn't the only one confused by what was happening. Everyone was looking around in a daze as if they'd all just woken up. この天神小学校に飛ばされて、ゆかと一緒に一の英の教室を出たところまでは記憶がある。チャイムが鳴って大きな地震があって、気がついたらここにいたんだ。みんな、みんなは二年九組の。Looking closely, I could see a handful of students wearing the uniform of Byakuden Senior High School, which wasn't far from ours. I even recognized a uniform or two from uh, Paulina, Polonia? Polonia, I think. Academy High School, I think. We'd had mixers with them in the past. But where was Kisaragi? Had the others not been brought here this time? Was I the only one? Okay, so Seiko's alive. Okay, excellent, nice. So everybody's gonna be alive this time. That's good, but for how long? No me. From deep within the throng of unfamiliar faces, Naomi and Shinohara came barreling toward me. The sight of friends amidst this chaos energized me, as if lifting a cloud from my heart. Forgetting for a moment Naomi was a girl, I rushed to meet her and hugged her with all my might. Tears were streaming down her cheeks. Most likely she'd been subjected to unspeakable horrors in the school until just a few minutes ago, 
just as Yuka and I had. So did like Sachiko, because she said that she like revive, or not revive, but like bring all of the undead people to the auditorium, I'm guessing. But like Seiko was, died pretty early on. So maybe this was like from the beginning, everybody got revived. It's weird, Naomi's voice sounds a little, like, muffled. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. Seiko, she's one of my faves. It's good to see her back. Hopefully she'll live longer this time. Naomi quickly pushed herself away. Shinohara was staring at her with an impish grin on her face, but she too had tears welling in her eyes. Eh, Yuka! Mm. I'm so happy you're here. Yay! Yay! The Teach, one of my other favorites. Her name's Yue, right? Uh, Yuka, Shinozaki, Suzumoto, and Miss Yue were all together and seemed to have noticed us all at once. They came running over to join the reunion. Yuka! Yui sensei! Yeah, Yoshiki! One of my other faves! And Mayu, hopefully she'll live for a while too. Yeah, and Morishige. Hmm, <laughs> I guess everybody has to be here. I have to say, uh, I don't know how you guys would rate. I would say my top three probably Yoshiki, uh, Miss Yue, and Seiko. Those are probably my three favorites. <laughs> We'd been told that even though the nine of us were all here in the same school, we existed in separate closed spaces and may never meet again. Yet, here we were, not in separate dimensions closed off from one another, but gathered together in the same space, and even the same room. We were still trapped in Heavenly Host Elementary, but my dearest wish was to be able to see my friends once more had actually come to pass. So yeah, I was crying. I couldn't stop the tears from gushing out of my eyes, even if I wanted to. We all slung our arms around one another's shoulders and enjoyed this first real moment of happiness any of us had experienced since or <laughs> this ordeal began. Hey, these kids have had a real tough time. Like I said, I don't imagine that Sachiko's idea of amnesty is going to be, like, all all that. Like, I feel people will still get killed. People will still be tortured. She'll probably have it under, under the uh, guise of games. Okay, then. We've got these guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sayaka and Naho. Other voices indicating similar teary reunions could be heard here and there throughout the auditorium. It seemed everyone here was in a similar situation to our own. And it was kind of strange. I recognized some of them, as if I'd met them in another life. Yet all the others in attendance were complete strangers. いたい。どうなって言うんだ。気絶している間に誰かに意図的に集められないと、こうはならないだろう。そうね。再会はできたけれど、見たところ天神小学校から出られたわけでもないから、手放しで喜べる状況でないことは確かだわ。みんな、ま
nonchalantly munching on potato chips from a bag she seemed to have just taken out of the cupboard. Ooh, given how, like, old Heavenly Host is, I'm like, I don't think I'd trust any food here, but... Also, given the fact that, like, usually all that's in Heavenly Host is, like, disgusting water filled with, like, rust and bugs and hair... She looks like a troublemaker. Certainly nonchalant. <laughs> okay, this must be a reason why this specific person was brought. Like, she wasn't even at the school. She wasn't even taking part in the, uh, in the ritual, and yet she's here. I don't know, I feel like she's going to be some sort of, like... I don't know, maybe she'll help Sachiko, maybe she'll be an antagonist. We spun ourselves around to see what had produced that ear-splitting feedback pulse. And there standing upon the auditorium stage was an enormous speaker. In line with it was the podium noted earlier, as well as a mysterious announcement board covered up with red cloth. <laughs> Oh, that definitely means that that, that weird guy is going to be here. Uh, I can't remember his name. The one that uh, chased uh, Yuka. Oh, what is his name? The real creepy guy. Everyone in the room began looking around frantically for any sign of the person speaking to them. There's that really bombastic music again. One thing I'm gonna say, as a little bit of a knock against this game right off the bat, is it feels like... I don't know if it's my, my sound settings, but the audio mixing doesn't seem to be the best. Like, I have... I'll show you guys. Because I even, like... So, like, I have the voice volume is cranked to 100, and, like, I, I really brought down the background music, and, like, I could bring down the special effects music a little bit, but it's mostly the background music, but, like, the voices still sound really muffled and not very loud, so I'm probably going to have to adjust this in my editing, like, when I put this through my editing software, which is, like, kind of annoying, but whatever. <laughs> As usual, Mushiki did not mince words, but his protests were met by a close encounter with a metal hammer which came whizzing toward him from the stage, spinning wildly through the air. So much for amnesty. <laughs> I guess this is, uh, this is Sachiko's version of like, I'm gonna take it easy on these guys. It's, I'm gonna throw hammers at them. It was positively massive, almost unimaginably so. And the aim was spot on. It landed right at Yoshiki's feet, easily sinking itself deep into the floorboards where it remained standing upright. Yoshiki fell to his knees, absolutely paralyzed with fear. Okay, so the, he has no memory of... So once again, like, is Satoshi the only one who seems to have memory of... Well, no, they all, like, talked about how they were all heavenly hosts, but I guess some of people didn't encounter this guy during their roots? The giant man, Ajo uh, Yoshikazu Yanagahori, was standing on one wing of the stage. He approached the podium at center stage and lifted a very little girl out from behind it, propping her up on his arm so the crowd could see her clearly. <laughs> Yoshikazu's response to the murmuring crowd was to stamp his feet hard and let out a bellowing roar, instantly silencing the room. It's like game show music. I feel like this is going to be like a game show or something. And once again, the music is just so loud. Why is it so loud? I think I'm gonna have to have it like cranked down to like nothing. Sorry guys, I'm just like, what is going on with this? Usually I find like the sound is really good in the Corpse Party games. This one? Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's literally saying a side story. Atonology. That yeah, definitely feels like there's going to be a lot of fourth wall breaking in this one. Because Kazami, that's him, right? That's the creepy guy. Sachiko quickly threw something in Satsuki's direction with deadly accuracy. It was chalk. It smacked her right in the forehead with a fleshy splut, and down she went. Well, better than a hammer, I guess. It was one of the girls from another school. She'd raised her hand enthusiastically, as if this were a proper class and she was aiming for high marks. Sachiko seemed to take well to this, pointing at the girl named Sayaka Ue and urging her to state her business. <laughs> Naomi seemed to be studying the girl closely. <laughs> that seemed like not such a smart thing to say. But Sachiko just swatted the idea away like it was a pesky fly without even flinching and without ever losing her smile. Now that definitely sounds like the wrong thing to say, as the boy with the red hair, Kai Shimada, spat out his demand. The rest of the attendees became riled up and began making similar demands of their own. Sachiko raised her hand slowly, pointing at Shimada before hastily swinging it downward. It would become clear why in just a moment. I think we're about to have a quick death here. Yep. I remember this dude. This was the dude that was like real kind of gross towards the girls, real lewd. And then uh, I think Kazami, he was the one who was all like, oh, I'm a gentleman, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you shouldn't talk to the girls like that when he's just a freaking psychopath. One of the lights from almost directly above Shimada came crashing to the floor with trem a tremendous force, brushing up against his cheek on the way down. I guess she is showing some amnesty, because normally he would just be probably dead immediately, but at the same time I feel like that wouldn't be as fun for her to just kill people off so quickly. In a state of absolute shock, a cold sweat immediately formed on his body, and he collapsed to the ground in a heap. <laughs> people are laughing? But no one else raised their hand. No one else uttered even a single peep, in fact. The room fell dead silent. Somehow, this made Sachiko smile all the more menacing. Then finally, the silence was broken. Sachiko raised her hand again with a flourish, and the cloth covering the board beside her fell away. Upon it was a hand-drawn map of the school that was somehow simultaneously joyous and extremely creepy. Chew them up and spit them out. Wow, the Great Confinement of Rotting Flesh Vessel. I don't know what it is with Japanese like titles being extremely long. I, I notice that a lot like anime titles and stuff where it's like they basically write out exactly what's going to happen in, in the anime episode. <laughs> I kind of like it. It's not very... Uh, it, it's definitely a mouthful. Yoshikazu Yanagihori once again bellowed at the, at the crowd and slammed his foot upon the floor with all his might. It was such a powerful stomp, in fact, that the whole room shook for several seconds afterward, the lights above clinking unsettlingly the whole time. 
<laughs> Sachiko's smile couldn't have been any wider or, surprisingly, any purer. She shifted her weight a bit and hopped over to the podium for a better, more central seat from which to address her captive audience. And then suddenly she pointed toward the presentation board with the conductor stick she'd somehow procured. It was pretty clear these weren't going to be quite as fun or entertaining for us as we were being so poorly led to believe. Yoshiki barked out his misgivings despite himself. <laughs> Yuka turned to look at Satsuki. Yeah, what's up with this girl? <laughs> they get to go home, you guys have to stay here and suffer forever. Oh, okay, never mind. <gasps> oh, Sukasa! Oh my gosh, her boyfriend from high school! What? Wait, what? But then he's like, okay, this is wild, So, but she's like full grown and he's still a teenager, right? Complete and utter shock in her voice was beyond apparent. Suddenly, there stood Mikuni Sukasa, decked out in his school uniform, exactly as Yue remembered him from his own, her own school days. Okay, so is he grown, but in his uniform, or is he still a teenager? Okay. No, Yue, no Yue, no. You're too old for him now, no. I love Mayu just endlessly enthusiastic and positive. Nana, Chihaya, and Nari all nodded in agreement for some reason. And a lot shorter, too. The audience certainly seemed to like it, but then Mayu was in the theater club, so it only stood to reason. She knew how to sell an idea. But uh, bit by bit, as she surveyed the applauding students, the look on Sachiko's face changed from one of pouty dejection to pure, unbridled enthusiasm. She most likely had no clue what hysteric meant. And Yoshiki, Shimada, and Morishige weren't exactly on board with the idea, the fact which they made abundantly clear. I don't think that uh, Sachiko's gonna take any sort of, like, special, um, uh, I don't know, basically treat Mayu with, like, special privileges just because she's trying to connect with her. <laughs> Poor Mayu, though. I don't think she's doing this to basically, like, get an edge over Sachiko. I think she genuinely, like, tries to see the best in people. I mean, she was the one who was talking to the, uh, ghost kids as well and then got splattered on the wall. So that's just the person she is. Yeah, 
I feel like Mayu's like, that's not what I'm trying to do. But Yumi would be like me, be like, okay, yeah, butter her up, try and get on her good side, and then use that to your advantage. <laughs> yep, there he is. Rap. <laughs> Did he literally say LOL out loud? Oh boy. Positively beaming now, Sachiko turned her head to look at something farther back on the stage. She suddenly had a knife in her hands and was tossing and catching it absent-mindedly as she considered her options. She then swung back around triumphantly. <laughs> I wonder if this is going to be maybe Naomi and Satoshi? Or maybe Ayumi and uh, Yoshiki? って今すごく人気あるんでしょ。まあ、そうだな。でも俺とラブコメに何の関係があるんだ。まあ、俺と篠崎が主人公。ええ。悪くねえ気もするが。今、岸沼君こっちを見た。まあ、気のせいよね。
かもしれねえがこんなものを篠崎たちにやらせられっかよ私は別にいいけど Oh no 本当にいいのかよ篠崎ハーレムだぞハーレム<笑>もうしょうがないわよねえじゃあもしかして中島もか私も主人公がサトシだったらいいかなあ別に変な意味じゃなくてその知らない人だと怖いってだけだけど<laughs> I was gonna wait for her to say as long as it's not you and Yuka obviously <laughs> look at her big smile we know she's got no problem with this <laughs> ぞ<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Yoshiki is definitely he's my fave. He's like, my heart is breaking. She's like, yeah, you're not. You're not part of this, so don't worry about it. <laughs> But that's, that's like. That's the whole point. You would just be like the weird, like, friend who's just like a pervert. But, like, that's the whole point of having these is just like a plain ass nobody with no special traits. Other than just being a nice guy. Oh no, no, that's terrible, no. Morishigi would only be interested if all the girls were dead. Poor Sato, she's just getting. I mean, granted, I'm saying the same thing, but basically just saying, like, you are just so plain and, like, oat, like basically oatmeal if it were a person. <laughs> like, he's just. He's getting dragged by even his friends. I'm sure it's just out of pure jealousy, but still. <laughs> どっちでもいいだろ、そんなこと。今はこの台本通りにラブコメをするかどうかって話をしてるんだ。それはそうだけど。な。お前に特徴があるとかないとかの問題じゃねえんだ。だろ。うん。そうだよな。
よしき<笑>もしもしよしきさんどうしても答えないといけないのかえー、すごく答えづらい質問だったの俺に特徴があるかどうか聞くのってそんなに厳しいことなのお兄さんねえゆかちもしかしてゆかちのお兄さんって特徴ないの<笑> That's literally what they are. Their whole thing is just like they're just a nice guy with no qualities, really, so that the person reading can just kind of imprint themselves onto them. That's the whole point. <laughs> But she's not denying it. Yeah, like the, the audio mixing on this is not very good. Like, he sounds really muffled sometimes. Okay, let's uh, let's move things along now. That's we're just arguing too much about him basically having no personality. Let's get on with what this entails. Satoshi, you're on the side, right? This is a book. I'm sure you're on the side, right? Satoshi. Satoshi. I'm in. He's like, I'm gonna prove myself. Oh, yes, that's, that's the reason why. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> サチコにはさからわない方がいいって思ってるだけでそれに篠崎も問題ないって言ってるしなあ篠崎もしたがった方がいいって思うよなうんお本気で言ってるのか篠崎え私さっきもこの台本でいいって言ったでしょ I'll see you. Shiki's not being so like possessive over her. She she can read. She can understand what's going on. Just let her let her make her decision. だけどよ。でも、サトシが主人公で、ハーレムなんだぞ。だから、それも持田君ならいいって言ったはずだけど。岸沼君、何を聞いてたの?よしき、大丈夫か? <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to skip it. I'm like, okay, I get it. They're drawing this out a little bit. I get it. I get it. Satoshi! I'm going to be a friend of mine! Yoshiki, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Finally, we got some creepy music going on. Let's let's get some stuff going here. But I don't want Yoshiki to like die immediately. He's one of like he's my favorite. He's certainly one of the more entertaining ones.
やべえ逆鱗に触れちまったか逃げたいやつにはチャンスをあげる All right, here we go. Escape room, yes. This is, this is the kind of stuff I was hoping for. Like, almost like a saw type thing where it's like they're put into a bunch of different rooms or they're given different challenges to hopefully, like, make it through to the end. <laughs> this feels like a trap. Will I have a, like, can I make choices whether or not I want to do it or not? Oh my gosh, am I actually gonna... <gasps> what? Do I actually get to move around? Can I do things? Oh, uh, hello. New character? Who looks like she dropped in from a magical girl anime? Dear what? Okay, what in the world? Yume! This prayer for light offered up by my dear wife wended its way into the air, but was quickly snuffed out by the overwhelming darkness of the school. My name is Ran Kobayashi. I'm a second year at St. Cruz Girls Academy. And my wife's name is Azusa Takai. She's a schoolmate of mine from the same grade. What sets her apart from so many others, though, is when she prays to God above, wondrous miracles sometimes come to pass. I should point out, so that there's no misunderstanding, that Azusa is not my actual legal wife. We're both still in high school, after all, and we're both girls. So there are many hurdles to overcome before we can make our union official. Our names won't appear... Uh, won't be appearing in any another... Oh, my goodness, sorry. Our names won't be appearing in one another's family registers anytime soon. Sad as that is to say. <laughs> この空間自体が持ってる力がね。空間自体が持ってる力。教会に行くと感じるでしょ。聖なる力を。まあ、空気が綺麗だな、くらいは感じるぞ。ここはその逆なの。確かに息苦しいな、ここは。よどんだ空
Although I swore to her everything would be okay, I could not justify that statement. A steady stream of doubt and unease flowed through me. I, what is with these two? Does she just kind of like go along with it? She seems to just be kind of like letting it flow off of her, but she seems to be kind of like, I don't know, non-committal in her answers. Like she's not responding as if she really cares about this girl. Definitely not the same way the girl cares about her because this was my wife. It should go without saying every part of her smelled positively divine. But of all her smells, her hair had always been my favorite. So I took a great huff of it here now as if this were to be the last I'd ever see of her, the smell was enough to touch me to my core. <laughs> this is like... It's like Seiko and Naomi, but punched up times a hundred. The feeling of absolute bliss spreading through my sinuses was overwhelming, which I meant quite literally as I found myself immediately fainting from it. Run? Just run. Is it okay? As my consciousness faded, I could hear my dear wife calling out to me, her voice filled with concern. Even then, it was like the voice of an angel, my betrothed, in all her splendor. Okay, that was... weird. さっきからキシノマくんが何度も私の方を見てる気がするんだけど、顔に何かついてるのかしら? It's funny, Yumi has a very good sixth sense for spirits, but she's absolutely terrible at, like, figuring out what other people feel, I guess, about her. よし、参加してやろう。よしき、本気で言ってるのか? ああ、ゴールできたらここから出られるんだろう。しかももう一人と。だったら参加しない手はないだろ。それはそうだけど。やっためだ。このゲームはやっちゃダメなんだよ。違う。冗談じゃな。じゃあ誰が篠崎を助けるんだよ。篠崎は俺が助ける。文句はないな、サトシ。Or Yoshiki. Like I know that he's a little possessive over her, but like my goodness, the the things this guy puts himself through to, for her sake, and she just doesn't seem to either. Like I'm not gonna say she doesn't care. But she seems like completely oblivious to how he feels about her, and I don't know, she just pushes him aside all the time. I've said it in the first corpse party, I said it in the second one. Yoshiki deserves better. Once again, here we are, and Yumi's just like, let me have my harem with Satoshi. <laughs> Like he's literally like, I will put my life on the line for her, and she's just like, can you not? <laughs> Probably, in a way, she's just like, also wants him to not do that, because he's also putting his own life in danger. Really? <laughs> 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 レーセンになれば篠崎だって。そのためには俺が俺が頑張らねえと。サチコ。その脱出ゲームって。てこれ<笑> At least someone seems to, like, see that there's something there. Like, he actually has some personality, unlike Satoshi. Oh, poor Nana, I remember her. She got, uh, 
She was the one I think she got pretty messed up in the other game. Didn't she get her legs chopped off? I think she got saved by Yoshiki and... Was it Mar Maru? Who was it? Or Maru. I don't think that's her name. Mayu. Uh, and then, yeah, like, they rescued her, right? I think she was the one who was all tied up. And they rescued her. And then she ended up getting killed anyway. But I can see how Nana maybe has, like, some memories of him saving her. So she's just, like, has some maybe residual feelings for him. なんだか見覚えがあるって感じがしない私は別にそっかじゃあ私の気のせいかなナーナちゃん私うんどうしたのちはやちゃんえっとちはんや言いたいことがあるならはっきり言いなよ だからそのもうイライラするななんなのなりちゃんそんな言い方したらちはやちゃんだって言いづらいよねえちはやちゃんうんどうせ私はせっかちだよ悪かったねなりちゃんもすねないでよそれでちはやちゃん さっき言いかけたのは、ちはやちゃんも見覚えがあるってことうん。私もはっきりとは覚えてないんだけど。じゃあ、私のこの胸の時々も気のせいじゃないってことちはやちゃんはあのキシヌマって人を見覚えある
もちろんだ。眉を置いて、どこかに行ったりしない。I love the difference of Yumi is just getting、uh, Kishinuma to like not risk his life. And meanwhile, Mayu, maybe she just doesn't sense that like, there could probably be something wrong with this escape room because she doesn't seem to understand the danger, potential danger here of like, just how bad Sachiko can be.、Uh, she's basically like, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Marsha.、Uh, you can go do that because she must know that he would save her. <laughs> I mean, if somebody has to.、Uh, Be yeeted out of this game, I'm totally fine with it being him. <laughs> yet she's, she has these feelings, and yet she's telling him, like, Go! I believe in you. I wonder if I actually get to, like, is this just going to be a sort of visual novel? Do I get to make choices? I assume so, because I know that there's different endings, but do I get to, like, do things? Do I get to control the characters at some point? It's weird playing a, a corpse party game where, like, I'm not controlling them at all. It's very, it's funny. The first game, like, I actually controlled them and had to walk them around the school. The second one was definitely more of a visual novel, but I still got to control like, where they went around the school. And then this one, it feels like there's not really much action. Hey, Kirisaki! What? If I'm going to go to the goal, I'll help you. Huh? Well, I'll give you a little bit of a risk. Yeah. 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 Ugh. Uh, actually, Marsha, he has more redeemable factors than this guy. I hope this guy dies first. I'm wondering what he's gonna, what he's gonna like, bring to this game. Right, because he doesn't care about anyone enough to like, bring them you know, to safety. All he cares about is himself. Actually, no, it's the other way around. He likes being here because he can just let loose and just be a monster. Nope, he's just like, no, this is like my playground here. Kirisaki?Kondo,顔が赤いみたいだな. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Finally, finally, we get, we get something here. The hint of some violence. I'm so bad. Oh, stop slurping. Ew! I hate slurping noises. With that, he flung open the door and ran through it to whatever horrors awaited on the other side. Alright, let's see. What, what is this? Unfortunately for him, a pit trap opened at his feet only moments after he crossed the threshold. And since he was running, he stood no chance of avoiding it. Almost as soon as he began, down he went into the depths, or I guess that's what she said about people who do go first have a disadvantage. <laughs> いきなり落とし穴だ。島田。島田。フライングは失格だって学校で習わなかった。Is that it? Is he just gone? 
幸子に逆らったやつは容赦しないということらしいなでもよ逆らわなくたって今日っていうサービス期間が終わったら平気で死んだりする現実に戻るんだよな黒崎まさかお前参加するつもりかどのみち恐ろしい日常に戻るのなら I guess so that's a good point right it's like this might be the only chance they actually have but even that seems like it would be too good to be true かもしれないが島田がどうなったかは見たはずだぞ Man, that was such a. It's funny, usually death in this game, it's so much more drawn out. It's so much more of an event. That was just like, okay, he fell down a hole and he's dead. I, this is kind of fucked up to say, but like, I hope future deaths get a little bit more pizzazz to it. I mean, that's kind of what people come to Corpse Party for is like, what horrible way are these characters going to die? Yeah. Now, here's the thing, too. Can only one person win? Or can as many people get through as possible? Because I would be down for that if like, people can actually be saved in this game. That would be nice. It would be nice for a happy ending. ああ。島田以外の白団の人間は助けられるそれは俺にも参加しろということか I love how nobody's really all that bothered about him dying I, I don't assume anybody really liked him all that much キザミお前が参加すれば6人助かるんだぜしかし危険すぎる落とし穴以外にもどんな罠があるかわからないそりゃ何が待ち受けてるかはわからないけどでも、俺がゴールしたら、ミツキさんを助けてあげられるんだ。フロサキ、turn to look at Mitsuki、hoping to indicate his intentions with a stern, determined look on his face。Mitsuki、however、completely misinterpreted his gaze。That's、uh,、that seems to be a running theme here with the girls just not quite understanding the guy's feelings。そうね、クロサキの言う通り、チャレンジする価値はあるわね。キダミ君が行かないなら、私が行く。I was wondering that. I'm like, why is it gotta be all the guys? I know it's like some, you know, sense of like chivalry where they're like the guys have to rescue the girls. But I, I like that Mitsuki stepping in, being like, I'm not gonna have the guys just do it all themselves. Like, I'm gonna put my own butt on the line here. Be the, you know, like,、uh, arbiter of my own destiny. No. <laughs> でもそれだと俺がミツキさんを助けられないんだよな確かにミツキの方が適任かもしれないがなーに何か問題でもあるわけいや別にそんなことは俺もミツキさんが一緒の方が心強いし変なあ袋井あああそうだなミツキがいてくれた方が助かる場面もありそうだじゃあ決まりね全員で脱出するわよ白団高等学校ファイトーおおみつきもう島田君がいないから全員で脱出って無理なんだけどそれ気づいてる ?Oh right, cause it has to be like even numbers, right? おっしゃクリアあキューやったねりょうすけあれ Like Kazami, like I said, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be just quite okay staying here. For some reason, Yoshi. Why is this? Why is it gonna be his full name every time? I struggle.、Uh, Yoshikazu Yanagahori was now dragging a television into the auditorium. でもそれだけじゃないような怖さを感じるよここに残った人たちにはこのテレビでレースの様子を見せてあげるね Who's that girl? Who are you? Wait, she looks sort of familiar? Is that? 
I, uh, no, no, that's not her. I was like, at the end, we were introduced to Ayumi's sister. That's not her, though. Aiko. あの、でも、一緒に言われると、すごく印象が悪いじゃない別々に言っても大差ないと思うけど。言われてみればそうね。じゃあ、もう一つの now, Aiko, I can understand not really being too surprised by this, considering she deals with spirits and stuff. But I still, I don't quite understand, like, why um, Yuka's friend is so nonchalant about this. There's got to be a reason why she specifically was brought here. あなたたちを助けてあげることはできない。でもね、こう見えても私、ずっと心配していたのよ。どうだか。あらあら、これまで何度となく、なほちゃんの危機を救ってあげてきたつもりだけど、随分冷たいのね。その度にちゃっかり
気持ち悪かったようなホタン犬丸くん結構頑張ってると思うけど多分さやかが行方不明になった後必死に探してたんじゃないかな Oh wait, so he must have I'm count he must have come into the world in search of her? I legit don't remember this guy if he was introduced in the last episode when Sayaka and Naho. Well, Naho, technically, she was in the first game, but. <laughs> okay, so he was in Blood Drive. Okay. Obviously he... he obviously didn't make much of an impact on me. Terechate. <laughs> This was immediately followed by another of Sayaka's apparently famous corkscrews exploding from her fist with almost superhuman vigor. And this one was aimed directly at Inamaro's nine tails, which was impacted so deeply as to be virtually flattened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so I looked it up, and it... There's there's too many Corpse Party games. I actually played... I thought I played Blood Drive. It was Book of Shadows. That was the second game. Blood Drive is another one you guys wanted me to play, and that's a completely different game. So that would explain why I've never heard of this, guys, because I have not read the manga, and I did not play Blood Drive. So I guess I'm sort of playing this in the wrong order. I apologize for that. この犬丸に同じ攻撃が二度通用しないのは、もはや常識。いつからそんな常識ができたのよ。それにこれだけ言っても私に気がないとわからない男の学習能力を投票かしろと。はははは、またまた。さやかが俺に気がないとしたら、
かしらねなんてことを言ってる間にレースは決まってました All right, here we go. Let's... 1位は、Please, yes. 篠原聖子選手 Right, Seiko? 聖子、早い早い Seiko took, took part of this? What? 篠原選手、スタートは遅かったはずなのに驚くべき速さで1位に踊り出ました Oh, wait, okay, so we're going from the romantic comedy to like everybody. I'm what? We spent so much time on the side stuff, and it's just like what? Teleport, teleport. Oh no, Seiko, please survive this. And with that, Seiko sped up even more. Alright, here we go. We're getting a little bit of a flashback here. Yep. <laughs> Poor Seiko, her fate is just sealed no matter what happens. Even when Naomi got that other chance to try and save her, it didn't work. And Seiko's like, Naomi, you couldn't save me, so I'm gonna save me. だから、ここは私にお任せ。でも、聖子、どうしたの、ナオミ？Oh, That'll always happen, no matter what. ごめん、セイコ。気のせいだよね。気のせいじゃないと思う。多分私ここでそうやって死んだんだよね。え？だったら、だからこそだよ、ナオミ。私その運命を乗り越えてゴールしてみせるよ。それって私のため？うん。私
廊下に穴が開いてて先に進めないみたいだけど、oh, no. コース間違えたかなそこのドアが開いてる。Seiko cautiously inched her way toward the door, then trepidatiously reached out a hand and pushed it open. It's so weird not being able to, like, do things. Are those donuts? Or bagels? This feels too. I don't know, what's the word? Like, juvenile? I feel like if she like pulls it down, something's gonna come down and crush her or something. <laughs> Naomi worriedly watched Seiko strike a gallant pose via the closed circuit television in the auditorium. A bad premonition began creeping over her, but she tried her best to ignore it, instead, focusing all her energy on positive thoughts and encouragement. Seiko, come I'm confused. Naomi turned to Sachiko, suddenly realizing what she was up to. Naomi and Kizita, me, Tiny. Bread eating. Wait, is the bread gonna eat her? Okay. Stay quiet and silently root for her. Something feels off. Try to stop her. Okay, so I actually- so I do get choices here. Let me save. Let me save. Okay, obviously something feels off, but I almost feel like that's what- That's what, like, the game wants me to do is try and stop her, so I'm gonna go the opposite. I'm gonna say stay quiet and silently root for her. Because, like, I can't stop her. I feel like if I try, I'm just gonna get Nomi, like, you know, sucked into this as well. Obviously, I know something's gonna happen. This definitely felt like the wrong choice, but I also, like, I want to collect my bad ends, you know? <laughs> so, we'll see what happens. Here we go. At that exact moment, everything went dark for Seiko. Her entire field of vision had been completely obscured by something. The, oh, the bread ate her! Oh! And she got decapitated. Giving me Madoka Magica flashbacks here. <laughs> I feel like that would happen even if Naomi tried to do something. <laughs> even the deaths are kind of cute. Like, it was like a little chibi of her. Totally called it and. <laughs> I like the fact that it, it, um, I don't know if the other games did this where it, like, shows you which choices you've already made. Oh, she heard her. It almost seemed as though Seiko could sense Naomi's feelings for a moment. And in that moment, she happened to notice a jumping motion within her peripheral vision. Hey, it actually did something, surprisingly. Seiko began running around, dodging the bread monster. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? What happened? What? <laughs> That's sad music, and once again, so she died no matter what. Oh 
Poor Naomi. She just always loses Seiko no matter what. So, I'm assuming the drip drop is like, did she just get killed again? Did she get decapitated again? They're being very subtle about it. I'm like, I want to see it. <laughs> I know it's fucked up to say, but... いえ、あなたのせいじゃないわ。教師であるわたしが元用心してみんなを守ってあげられなかったから。は、サチコファクトを解除するの忘れてた。それじゃあ成功は絶対死んじゃうよね。わあ。あらあら、サチコちゃん
With that, he brought the hammer down, striking the plank repeatedly in several different spots. That, I think that's the point. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know if it's just, um, yeah, I don't know if it's just Seiko who's, like, destined to die, because it just feels like, this feels like the other games were just, it feels so pointless, because, like, no matter what decision you make, if these characters are fated to die, that's just how it's gonna be. Kurosaki, Kyojinda! So they gotta get, they gotta get moving. They gotta go. Oh, a narrator. Okay. Give up! Give up, da Satsuko! That's the thing his brain came up with, was, I give up. Oh, hello. What are you doing? Are you going to push him? As if in immediate response to this declaration of surrender, a figure materialized behind Kurosaki. <laughs> oh shit, you are gonna push him. Like, get out of the way. The shadow followed this meek apology with an entirely heartless Sparta-style kick. This is Heavenly Host! Kurosaki was no match for the force of this maneuver. He fell from the plank of wood with the utmost vigor into the darkened depths below. Once again, this poor guy got screwed over again. Because Kizami, like, before didn't he stab him and then kick him down the hole? Like, that's another thing he's just fated to get killed by, Kizami. Yes, it really was, Kizami. Where's the smile? Creepy smile. Come on. Nakama? <laughs> There it is. Hizami-kun, <laughs> 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 それはちょっと違うな。何が違うって言うのよ。落ちないように頑張ってるクロサキを。あなたは蹴り落としたじゃないのよ。クロサキはもう失格だった。つまり、いずれにしても死んでいたわけだ。俺はそれを少し早めた
落ち着け袋いあんた本気で言ってるのこいつは黒崎を黒崎を蹴り落としたのよ分かってる俺だってこの目で見たんだからなだが今は言い合いをしている場合じゃない袋いの方が状況判断ができているようだな刻み一つ聞いておきたいこのレースに乗り切れなかったお前がなぜここにいるなぜねえ答えはとてもシンプルだ<笑> Because the game has told me that's what I need to do シンプルそれはどういういいだろうお前たちにも分かりやすい姿となって追い落としてやろう Wait, take on a form what? Is he gonna turn to a demon right now? <laughs> what? What's going on? Okay It was then Fukori uh, Fukuroi and Mitsuki both noticed the belt of transformation Kazami was wearing around his waist. What is happening? He slowly, deliberately reached down to it, flipped a switch in its center. An electronic voice began reverberating through the halls. Switch on! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. カウント長すぎじゃないかさすがにそう焦るなよ袋い死の世界への秒読みだと思えばそう長くは感じないだろうというか数字が増えてるじゃないかキサミ君の体に真っ黒いモヤモヤが絡まってる彼の身に何が起きてるの Oh, the darkening, of course. Saturday night! 40! Hit him! Transform! He's even got the little, like. What is. What? Okay, what are you turning into? What the f fuck? What? 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 <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> 気をつけろこうなってしまったら前ほど優しくはないぞ優しくなかったし変身通貨今かぶり物かぶったよね見てたよ Oh is that like a reference to I think in the first game when he was like there was the there was like the anim the animatronic or not the animatronic but it was like a skeleton or something that was in the lab and he was something to do with that I think I remember He's hiding behind it or he was controlling it? Oh, yeah, my car is in it. I know that. She need to know. Can I? Well, don't go. Cross. Limit to break. Oh, my God. I can't. I can't handle this right now. Oh, dude, he's going to get thrown down. The Anna uh, anatomical model slammed into Fukuroi with all its weight, pushing him over quite handily. Be nice if he could have dragged him down at least. And once again, Fukuroi, he did the same thing he saved Mitsuki in in the previous game. It's all repeating itself just in different ways. It seemed as though Fukuroi was falling forever, but eventually the last trace of his flailing form was swallowed up by the darkness. くどろのやつ、くだらない邪魔をしやがって。おかげであっさり殺しちまったじゃねえか。サミ君。あんた何なのよ。え?これまで一緒に過ごしてきた仲間をあんな簡単に殺しちゃえるなんて。命の重さを
その命を輝かせてやっているに過ぎない。<笑>なあ、山本、お前も見せてくれるだろう。目がくらむほどの眩しい輝きを、oh. 俺に。That's right. <laughs> I think he said that about like the only time that you really see a person or like a, you know, a person at their most human is when they're like about to die to see what they do. You know, like, will they fight back? Will they cry? Will they beg for mercy? And that's when he says, like, that's, I think he said something like that. Like, that's when they shine the brightest. So, so, Dana. Yes, you're wearing, like, you're wearing a whole other body. Okay, now he's on fire. As if on cue, the anatomical model lit up like a match head, becoming instantaneously engulfed in flames. Mitsuki attempted to kick the anatomical model, but he completely blocked the impact with his arm. しかもいきなりのミドルキックいいセンスだ<笑>だがいかんせんかいつかがいかんせんかいつかがいかんせんかおっと怖いからってあんまり暴れるなよ俺まで落ちてしまうじゃないかなら、お前も落ちろなっ Oh, is she just gonna be like, all right, if I'm going down, I'll bring you down with me? Nice. Mitsuki, you're fuck, man, she's badass. I'm gonna put her on, on my top tier characters. The two of them both lost their footing in the struggle and fell to the darkness below. Well, shit, that's almost all of them gone. There's just a couple of people from that high school left. I just like to imagine they're having this calm conversation as they're falling to their death. Alright, guys, so that will do it for part one of my sweet Sachiko's hysteric birthday bash. It's gonna take me some time before I get, like, a handle on that name. Uh, at least it's not her original name for what this game was supposed to be. Uh, overall, it's kind of about what I expected. It's more lighthearted. It's basically an offshoot of the mainline games, something a little bit different. Uh, but there are definitely still some dark uh, moments. It took some time for it to start to kick in, but uh, once it ramped up, like, I was surprised by, you know, how many characters died in the first, what, two hours? But... I'm hoping we're gonna get some more, like, the deaths when they do happen, that we're gonna get a little bit more in-depth of them. It's just basically, like, most of them just fell into a pit, uh, and one person got their head chomped off, but even that was kind of, like, done in a cutesy way, so I'm saying, like, let's bring back some of, of the, uh, the really gory stuff. Uh, we'll see, I don't know. But I hope you guys did like the first part of this new Let's Play series. Let me know in the comments what you think of this game. Uh, and uh, stay tuned next week for part two. Until next time, bye guys. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons. Kiori Makoto, Revealing Storm, Jared Fan, Tequila Mockingbird, Izzy Ibo, Joel Ustman, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Icognito, 
Locus Corollus, and Wusing Chrysalis. 